Good evening, everyone. Listen, I just posted in the comments. He is such an amazing God. That's where I am going already. I'm already excited that God is an amazing God. If you can agree with me, if you can believe that God is amazing, I just want to see you post in the comments right now that God is an amazing God. His name is above every name. Come on, he sits Hi, come on. He sits high and we sit in heavenly places with him. Welcome everybody. This is day number 22. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it of the 31 day supernatural healing challenge. I want to go ahead and welcome you guys. I see your faces. I see that you have shared. Come on. He is such an amazing guy. I began to just put that in the comments. Come on. He is an amazing God. He is worthy of all the glory. I love him so much come on let's just begin to worship him let's begin to just pray let's begin to just give god glory come on we are believing god for super natural healing we are believing that we uh, that god is a god that does not lie we are believing in his word we are standing on his word and for the past 22 days that's exactly what we have been doing we have been reciting we've been hearing we've been renewing our mind with the lord uh, with the word we have increased our faith by hearing the word of the lord we've had some amazing doctors that come on and talk about the science of everything and how it is related spiritually come on science is beginning to prove that god is who he says he is so let's just begin to just worship him we don't want to do anything without inviting holy spirit into our presence we just want to believe that God is real. There are so many things in my life that I can speak of that just lets me know that God is real. And not only is he real, but he has uh, uh, thoughts of me. <laughs> I don't know about you, but my God thinks of me. He thinks specifically of me. He finds ways to show me that he's thinking of just me so i am praying for each and one of us today that we begin to just renew our mind in christ that our minds become transformed that we increase in our discernment knowing what the will of god is come on we want the will of god it is his good and acceptable and perfect gift to us his will is perfect and it is his will that we be healed come on you have to know the the will of the father the enemy will try to tell you lies to have you believe that you are to be sick in your body that your mind is not supposed to be right that you are supposed to suffer from depression and anxiety and schizophrenia and bipolar disorder that you're supposed to have personality disorders that your personality is supposed to be split and i'm here to tell you right now we cancel that enemy in the name of jesus I am praying that you have the mind of Christ. When you have accepted Christ as your savior, you began to have the mind of Christ. I pray, Holy Spirit, that each person under the sound of my voice begins to take every thought captive to obey Christ. Come on, that we cast down every argument and every lofty opinion that is raised against the knowledge of God that we cast that down and we take every thought captive to obey Christ come on we want to have the mind of Christ there's so many people that are suffering from dementia, so many people that are suffering from fragmented minds but that is not the will of God and I'm praying that we begin to just release God's anointing on our minds, that we begin to renew our minds with his word and that our hearts be transformed to believe that God is who he says he is. We thank you, Lord. That's right, Teresa. Let our mind be in you that was in Christ. Thank you, Lord. We just honor you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. You are welcome in this space. 
You are welcome to permeate our hearts. You are welcome to change and shift this atmosphere. You are welcome to heal. Come on, how many of you all need healing right now? How many of you all are suffering from depression? How many of you all are suffering from anxiety? Who, who needs healing right now? Holy Spirit, you are welcome. And we posture our hearts to receive everything, every good thing that you have for your sons and your daughters. Because every gift is perfect from you. You give good and perfect gifts because you are a good father. And I just release that over you. I just release that over you. You're such a good God. You're such a good God. Listen, I want to go ahead and get us started for day number 22 of 31 Days of Supernatural Healing. For those of you all who do not know me, I am Dr. Shanika Scarborough. I am a board certified family medicine physician. I am a speaker and an author. And above all, I am a lover of Christ Jesus. Come on. We speak healing to Sharon right now in Jesus name. We pray for her back in Jesus name that it comes under alignment to what God has in, uh, intended. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, come fire in her back in Jesus name, fire in her knee in Jesus name. And I pray, Sharon, you can just get up. You need to just all during this broadcast as a prophetic act unto God. I want you to stand up. I want you to walk. I want you to bend that leg. I want you to bend that knee. I want you to bend forward and bend back. Try and do things that you weren't able to do before. And I believe the Lord is healing you in Jesus name. Get up as an act when, when, um, when he told the, 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 uh, what is, what was he? The soldier that needed to be healed of leprosy. He told him to go and dip yourself in the water seven times and he was upset. Like, why should I do that? You know, why do I have to just, just speak your magic words and, and I'll be healed. And he said, I told you go and dip yourself in the water seven times. And when he did that prophetic act, it took him to do something. He had to do something. He had to get up and do it. And when he did it, he was healed in Jesus name. Come on. When Jesus tells you to, to pick up your bed and walk, you have to get up and you have to do something. So we just speak that over you. Sharon, if your pain starts to decrease or you start to feel better, you let us know in these comments. We'll be waiting for it in Jesus' name. So I want to take a moment and introduce you guys to the doctor that I have um, that is going to be speaking tonight. Her name is Dr. Nicole Washington. Go ahead and begin to post in the comments. Say hello to Dr. Washington, Dr. Nicole. She is hanging out with us today. Let me share a little bit about her, Dr. Nicole Washington. She's actually a native of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So if there's some Louisianans in the in the uh, in the comments, go ahead and post uh, for her hometown. She uh, attended the Southern University and AME College. After receiving her bachelor uh, degree, she moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma. So if there's anybody in, in Tulsa or Oklahoma, you go ahead and give her a shout out. And she uh, completed a residency in psychology at the University of Oklahoma in Tulsa. Since her completion, um, Dr. Washington has spent most of her career caring for and being an advocate for those who are not typically consumers of mental health services, namely underserved communities, those with severe mental illness and high performing professionals. Through her private practice, podcasts, speaking and writing, she seeks to provide education and efforts to decrease stigma associated with psychiatric illness. Everybody just go ahead and welcome Dr. Nicole. Thank you so much for saying yes and joining everybody tonight. Well, hello, hello. This is, this is, I'm excited. I'm really excited for tonight. It's going to be good. I'm so excited. Come well, first, on, I want to thank Dr. Shanika for even putting this this month on. I think it's mm -hmm. I've, I've looked back at some of the other videos and it's amazing the knowledge and the just the movement that I can see happening in the comments and in the speakers. This is this mm -hmm. is amazing. So come on. when when Dr. Shanika first brought this up, I thought, oh, 
you know, faith and mental illness. We can probably, we can talk on, we can pick that apart and talk about that for hours, right? And here in the last week, I will say I'm seeing a lot of people who are really struggling right now. Yeah. And I know you're like, we've all been struggling for months. It's been happening for a while. Like this is a, this has been going on for a while. And I, in the beginning, I think people, especially my faith people were saying, it's fine. Like it's going to be short lived. We can get through this. We can do anything in a short period of time. It's going to be fine. 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 And it hasn't flipped around like we thought it would. Like we first thought, oh, a month, two months, three months, you know, we're almost the whole year stuck with this thing. And people are starting to get discouraged mm. and people are starting to, to lose that, you know, lose that faith a little bit. I, I, and people tell me, like, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm losing my faith. But what I find is that it's not that they're losing their faith. I think some people have in their head that because they have faith, they will mm. never ever have to suffer mm. or so never good. ever have to have any unpleasant feelings or never ever have to. And so they sometimes will misinterpret going through a little rough patch as, well, something's wrong with my faith. My faith isn't strong enough. It isn't strong enough. And that's a theme I'm hearing a ton right now with everything that's going on around us in the world, the pandemic. And it's not that because there's nowhere in, there's nowhere in life that we can expect to never have to struggle. That's not how we were designed. Like God gave us all these emotions. And when something happens, like, you know, outside shuts down and you can't do the things that you normally do, it's pretty normal to feel a little, a little nervous. Like that's mm -hmm. perfectly fine. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with your faith. If you take a pause and you feel that little, okay, like what's going on? There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with you being upset because you've missed things or you had your heart set on certain things and they didn't happen for you nothing wrong with feeling upset. Mm -hmm. I think that where the where people miss it and where I think we sometimes we lose we lose sight of the fact it's not the struggle that that is the issue. It's the kind of what you do with the struggle. Yeah. And I'm and so glad you, you brought that up too because I think sometimes we forget that we have emotions and it's okay for us to have emotions that God has emotions. Mm -hmm. Jesus has emotions, right? He was he was angry, he, you know, righteously angry, he threw all, you know, threw over the the tables for yep, the, you know, the, the tax table. collectors and <laughs> you know what I mean? When he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he was in anguish and and tearful, he was sad about, mm -hmm. you know, his 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 disciple Judas like he has feelings. Mm -hmm. God gave us these things for us to be able to interact with our environment and have empathy for things and mm -hmm. you know, have sympathy for things and we understand what we're going through. But it's it's okay to have those. It's when those turn into pathological things that the enemy tries to, to use that space to come in and start to deceive you and start to change things up for you. So yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Right, and to convince you that something's wrong with you for feeling yeah. this way. Yeah. To convince you that, well, you're already feeling this way, so you might as well go a step further and do this. Or you're already mad, so you might as well just go all the way off. You know, you're already sad. And so it you you know, you definitely have to have to think of what what am I hearing? Like what voice am I hearing? Who am I listening to? What is in my ear? And sometimes, you know, I mean the enemy's really good at making you think it's okay. And that some of that stuff is okay. Hundred um, percent. One of the other things that you know I see a lot of here now, you know, as folks are trying to make it through, trying their best to make it through um, this this time. You know, we got all the political stuff, and you got all the the racism stuff, and we got just the head with homeschooling, with full time parenting. We we are now teachers, moms, and dads, hmm. chauffeurs. We are extracurricular coaches. We are everything to everybody right now. Everything you um, didn't sign up for. Of, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> it's not what we signed up for at all. <laughs> not what we signed up for. Uh, and, but that's just it. People are feeling guilty. Like they're feeling really guilty about not being 100% enthused about the fact that they're doing all these things right now for all these people. And that's okay. I mean, it just goes back to being able to, you know, it, it's all about, it's all about how, you know, and I think at the end of the day, if you can keep track of who you are, mm. And whose you are, come on, 
then it, it helps you make it through those tough days, right? When the kids are cutting up and you don't know the math to help them with the math and you're struggling with all that stuff. Like it's important to take a minute and to just reflect on the day. And gratitude right now is one of the most important tools we have to make it through where we are. And so I'm, you know, really encouraging people in this time, remember there is nothing wrong with those emotions, but when they come, try to find a way to flip your brain and not let your brain focus so much on the negative and focus on what in that situation you have to be grateful for. Because in just about every situation, you can find something to be grateful for. That's good. You know, that kid may be cutting up, that kid may not be able to get this math. You may not be able to get this math, but you know what? Be thankful that you're in a spot where your kid can stay home if that's what's important to you. And that, you know, you you can you can get through this. Right? That is finding finding even the smallest thing to be grateful for can definitely change and flip the script, especially as you're dealing with a lot of those negative thoughts that are trying to pop through because they will right now. This is our brains are fertile ground for any negativity for the enemy to just come on in there and just plant all kinds of seeds because we're all stressed out. Yeah. Everybody's, everybody's struggling with something right now. You know, it's I'm too busy. I'm not busy enough. I'm, I can't get out. I'm out too much. Like nobody's really content where they are right now. Mm -hmm. And that is fertile ground for negativity to just grow and breed. And I, and we have to be, we have to be in charge of what we allow to be planted. Yeah. And we just actually had this conversation. I don't know if you guys remember, but we had a whole conversation about how gratitude actually changes the chemistry of your brain. We had a whole talk on that. So it's not just, um, you know, the, the psychiatrist, the expert here, you know, telling you that, oh, just be grateful. She, there, it is actually biblical and mm-hmm. scientifically proven that when you have an attitude of gratitude, when you have a heart of thanksgiving, as the Lord tells us to have, that we're supposed to guard our hearts among everything else, above everything else. We are to guard our heart and to have this attitude of thankfulness bring everything to him with uh, you know thanksgiving and you know make your supplications no it is biblically sound Mm -hmm. and scientifically it changes it literally releases the feel-good hormones in your body so those of you all who are suffering from depression those of you all who are suffering from anxiety disorder those those are literally the opposite of that, right? You don't have a, because if you're anxious, you feel like the world is about to end, you know, things are going wrong. I, you know, I'm worrying about all of these things. Your mindset has to shift because when your mindset shifts, come on, the chemicals in your brain begins to release the things that shuts down depression, that shuts down, come on, anxiety. Come on, we got to have that. We have to change our mindset and believe God at his word because not only mm-hmm. is his word true, but it's scientifically proven. Come on. <laughs> right. right. And it's not, a, it's not, they're not exclusive things. It's not yeah. that they're not always exclusive. You know, people tend to think, well, if I, if I do this and if I'm praying and if I'm practicing gratitude and if I'm doing all this, then I, I shouldn't have to go deal with those mental health people. And those two worlds very often need to come together. Like it it needs to combine, you know? So, you know, if there is someone who is out there and thinking, well, you know, I mean, I took medicine or I found that I needed the medicine. What does that say about me? It doesn't say anything. It just says you need it both. Um, It doesn't say anything about you at all. It says that for some reason, the way your brain chemistry is set up, you needed to combine the two worlds. And hopefully you found somebody in the mental health world that respected the faith world and that they were able to work together. Yeah. And the best relationship is when both sides are respectful of the other as a very, very important part of your treatment. That's good. That's good. Because a lot of times either side doesn't do that, right? Like either side will push back on the other and that won't work. 
Yeah. And I wish and I will I'll I'll speak from someone having the same experience. You know, I, I don't know if I told you, Dr. Nicole, or you follow uh, the program, but I've suffered from depression in the past. I used to be suicidal. I had multiple um, hospitalizations for um, suicidal thoughts and all of these things. Um, and I wish I wish during that time I had counseling, I had, you know, all of that, but it didn't work for me personally uh, because there wasn't a spiritual component to it. Now, as the spiritual component started to come into my life and I began to renew my mind in Christ, things began to shift literally in my in my brain and I just wish that at that time I would have had the opportunity to have like a Christian therapist that was able to you know help me heal from a lot of trauma or you know the the issues that were going on you know and so those of you all that are suffering right now from depression and and anxiety and any of these mental disorders that you know number one there's nothing there's nothing wrong with you OK, that there is there is not there is no reason that you can you should not be ashamed. That is another um, lie of the enemy. The enemy will put shame on you to make you feel as if that, you know, oh, you're not good enough. You know, your faith isn't strong enough um, that, you know, God doesn't hear you because you're sick and, you know, all of these things. And it's like, no, let's shut that enemy down right now. Let's cancel that. You know what? I'm just going to speak that over this group right now. We're going to cancel. We're going to silence the enemy right now that has been trying to tell you that there is shame in seeking psychiatry, that there is shame in seeking medication, because sometimes there has to be a bridge that happens until you are able to get to a place where you can can work some things out. And that's between you and your doctor. I'm a firm believer that you are not supposed to be on these medications for life. That is my belief. I believe that you are not supposed, that is not God's intent for you to be on these medications for life. But there, there is a time I needed it. I had to be put on medication, but thank you, Lord. I have been 11 years medication free in Jesus name. So I truly believe, you know, that as you renew your mind, that you can find peace. Come on. God is God is the, the God of perfect peace. The God that drives out all fear. Come on, he has already, he's given us, he's given us tools for us to be healed. But you have to take the steps. You have to go see your psychiatrist. You have to be stable because you, if you're unstable and you are in a place of suicidal thoughts, you are in a place of hurting yourself, you are in a place of hurting other people, that's a problem. That's a problem. And it has to be addressed, especially in our communities. In our communities, we have been shamed into believing that we don't need mental health, that we don't need psychiatrists, that if you go to a psychiatrist, you know, you crazy or, you know, whatever negative thing the enemy is speaking to your mind. So we are going to cancel that right now in the name of Jesus over Amen. you. Amen yeah. to that. One of the things you mentioned, you know, it was the you believe that things can change. And for yeah. you, it's been 11 years. Yeah. And I think that's one of the other, you know, when you think of, you know, tips and tricks that can be used to convince you yeah. that you are going to stay in this place forever. Yeah. Is that people tend to fall in that rut of because I feel this way today, mm -hmm. that this is just how it's going to be. Right. Yeah. And that's not that's not that's not accurate. You know, that's not a fact. Everybody changes. Um, and it's not biblical. Right. Because if we believe, you know, if we, if we believe what we know to be true, then it's not a matter, you know, of, of I'll never change. Right. Because then why would we ever why would we ever go out and minister to people? And why would Come we on. ever try to outreach people? And why would we ever I mean, I don't know that you can believe in Jesus as who he is and not believe that people can change. Like, I don't know that you can. And a lot of times we will believe that other people can change, but we don't believe we can change. Ooh, say that again. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, you know, we'll put all that like into other people and we'll pour into other people. And we just think that for us, there is no hope, right? It's, it's hopeless. This isn't going to get better. It's nothing, 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 you know, and, and that's just not true. Like we can change things can get better. And, you know, if you think about, you talk about traumas and especially in our communities, um, trauma's huge. Trauma, mm -hmm. trauma has always been big. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a statistic that, and, you know, I know that number will go up now because of everything we're dealing with with this pandemic and this year, it seems. But 
about 50% of American adults have experienced some kind of traumatic event in their lives. 50%. 50% wild. At least huge. some, at least one on the long yeah. list of traumatic things that can happen. Yeah. At least one of those. That's a lot, right? That's a lot of people who've experienced some kind of trauma. And what does trauma do to us? It makes us negative. Mm -hmm. It makes us angry. Mm -hmm. It makes us afraid. It makes it to where we can't trust people. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think the, you know, the church has been, the church as a whole, like the big C church, like as a whole mm -hmm. has um, in some ways played a part in that yeah. trauma. And yeah. we've, no, we've played agree. a part in that over the years. And so then we wonder why is it that people don't trust us and don't, you know, the time you mention the word Christian or Jesus or anything mm -hmm. like that, they start side eyeing you and all of that because they, yeah. they some, for some of them, their traumatic experience came from us. Yeah. That's so true. That's so true. Church hurt is so real. Right. And so yeah. we have to figure out how to move through those things, not continue that same behavior that we know was going on and to, to help people really move through and to show them what it's really about and not this other stuff that folks have, you know, been putting on Jesus for a long time. Cause mm -hmm. you know, in mm -hmm. this country, lots of people, that lots of people have used the Bible to do a lot of things to a lot of people. Yeah. And so, so we right. just have to be, we have to make sure that we're, you know, working hard to, to work, 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 and to show people that their impression of what the church is, is not what the church really is. Yeah. And to be able to meet people where they are and carry them along. Right. Cause Jesus didn't just hang out with perfect people, right? That's it. Come on. <laughs> like he was not here. He was not Teach. here hanging out. <laughs> out of the tracks all the time. He was, on, you know, Peter, look, I truly believe Peter had some some mental issues. Let's be real. Like as soon as as soon as somebody came after Jesus, he went to cutting people's ears off. Like that is not that is not. <laughs> Like you don't need yes. to be perfect. You don't need That's to be it. perfect to be called, right? Like That's soon, it. Soon, soon as Jesus says he can use you, you are oh, you are able to be used. Doesn't matter what your past looked like, doesn't matter what kind of flaws you have, doesn't matter any of that stuff. Yeah, but and do. it's usually the imperfect people that he is calling. No, no, right, right. Because those are the people that other folks can look at and go, oh, well, if they can, uh, if they can come pull it together, so then maybe I can it. pull it together, too. So, that's yes, it. absolutely. Yeah, that that's is the something. beauty of the gospel. No, it is. It is. And being a psychiatrist, you know, people, it's very interesting because I see people who are who are, you know, Christian and who, you know, are active in their faith. And I see those. I see people who or atheists, I see people who are agnostic. I see all kinds of people. Um, and it's always interesting to me, you know, people are all so, so hesitant about mental health. Like it doesn't matter what their faith background is. People are so, yeah. people are so hesitant. Um, it's almost like they think we're psychic or something and gonna read their mind. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, but when you get to using the Holy Spirit, you just might you just might be able to tell them some things that, that only Jesus know. <laughs> no, you're right about that. You're right about that. You're right about that. But no, I, I definitely think so. You know, the trauma piece, you know, when you think about like we've so many of us have experienced so much hurt just in life in general. And I think it is easy when you, especially if that hurt came at the hands of somebody who was supposed to be there to protect you. So if that hurt comes from the people who were supposed to protect you no matter what and who was supposed to have your back. So if you think about, you know, a lot of times the traumas that we experience come at the hands of our parents. They come at the hands of our grand. They come at the hands of our loved ones. They're from the church. They're from the people that are supposed to protect us and take care right. of us. And that really, really interferes a lot, I think, with people's um, 
one, it affects their it affects their faith. It affects their faith walk mm-hmm. because they start thinking, well, I mean, if I can't rely on my family, who can I rely on? Mm-hmm. And it's hard to get people to to kind of see that. It's hard to see that. It's so hard to see that when you've been hurt because it's just like you walk around with this weight on you, and you just yeah. can't. You just cannot come out of that. And just you know, having the right people around you, and you know, if you find yourself being so negative, or you know somebody who's so negative and just so resistant about religion and faith and Jesus, and you just can't get through to them. I think it's important to remember that it's possible that that they're dealing with a level of hurt. It's just a trust issue. And so I do, I do think sometimes one of the most effective things that you can do is to, to just, just be friendly. Yeah. Just, just, just smile, just be friendly, just be, you know, I think we sometimes feel like as Christians that we have to go around, like we we feel like, okay, I got to go around and I got to make sure that every opportunity I get when I talk to somebody, I got to make sure I bring up Jesus at least three times. And I got to make sure I invite him to church at least twice. And I got to make sure, <laughs> you know, like all these things, right? And that's great. That is, that's great. That you feel like, that's uh, that evangelism right, spirit. Right. <laughs> Especially yeah. the ones yeah. who have not been active and who yeah. are struggling and don't see hope and are anxious and depressed and, and just can't yeah. see any kind of light. Sometimes they just need very subtle, small moves. So sometimes less is more. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, you know, giving a person a meal, giving them a yeah. $5 Sonic gift card, giving them a, you know, something small, like, Hey, I was thinking about you. Here you go. Yeah, I was just thinking about you. Just want to say hi. Just want to let you know. Just Just be the light. light. Like you don't have to go around, you know, you don't have to go around praying and uh, somebody say, yep, show them, show them the gospel, not just in words, right? Like just show them, like just show them. And what better time than right now to do that? Cause so many people are hurting, like so many people are hurting. Um, and so many people I'm hearing tell me that they're seeing people come to their church. They're seeing people come to Jesus, come to Christ who've never been in church before. And so this is the time. I mean, this is this is literally the time. This is the time. So just like the ground is fertile for all that negativity and stuff. It's also a fertile time for us to show people what it is that having faith looks like what it is that being a Christian looks like, like, what does that look like? This is our time to help people see like all the good that can come. Cause if they see you and you're still grateful and you can talk about gratitude as, as ugly as things can be, and you can talk about your anxieties and you can talk about fighting your depression and fighting your demons. And you can talk about that stuff when stuff is so heavy right now, Right. right. they're going to wonder, well, what's, What's she taking? Like I want right. or whatever she taking. Right. You know, what red is, or the blue pill? What's what she taking? <laughs> you know, what is that? So I think, you know, now is the time for us yeah. to I mean, now is the time for people to see you. This is that time where they can see, like, oh, okay, something's different about you. How is it that everybody else is ugly and fighting about politics and race and this and that? And how is it that you're not? Like, how are you able to stay sane? How is your marriage able to stay intact? How Mm -hmm. is it that you are not, you know, out here about to knock your children out because the homeschool and stuff? Like, how are you maintaining? And that's, that's your end. Yeah. And that's so good. We talked about that too, staying on assignment. So the Lord has given each one of us an assignment. Mm -hmm. Um, So instead of worrying about everything that's happening around you, if you stay focused on your assignment, if you stay meditating on his word, if you still have that heart of gratitude and that heart of thankfulness, it's really not just in word, but in deed. And it is a posture that Mm -hmm. is in your heart. And you can literally ask the Lord because he will give it to you. Just ask Holy Spirit. You know what? I need some of your joy today. Mm -hmm. I need your perfect peace peace today, right? Mm -hmm. Because your perfect peace drives out fear. And right now I'm fearful. You can be honest with God and tell him exactly where you are. If you're not honest with anybody else, you know, he's looking, he wants to be your friend, like share that with him. Lord, I'm really struggling today. The other day I'm, I was struggling. I was like, Lord, today is the day today. I am struggling and I need you. I need your peace. I need your love. I need all of that to supernaturally flow into 
me right now because I don't want to say anything that I am not supposed to say to who I'm not supposed to say it to. Okay, so I need your perfect peace. <laughs> and you will literally begin to feel the presence of the Lord because you've asked him. He says you you have not because you've asked not. Right. We just expect that because we're Christians, that we don't have to ask God for anything. That it that it's just going to automatically come. But no, we are the conduit here on earth to see heaven come to earth. We are the conduit. He gave us dominion here on this earth to tread on serpents and scorpions and all of that stuff. He gave us dominion. So we have to open up our mouth and re release a word to him and say, you know what? I need kingdom here now. Release and like you were, talking, you were talking earlier about gratitude being healing and restorative. So it's prayer. Yes. So it's prayer. We know that your body releases certain indoor. We know that praying for yourself, praying for other people, right? You yes. know, when we go to prayer on behalf of somebody else and we're praying, things are happening in your brain. Things are happening in your body. Though All yes. those good feeling, relaxing hormones, they're yeah. all coming. Those endorphins, the same ones. You don't need a prescription. <laughs> Teach it, teach it. The same ones that you all are, are trying to get when you're going to exercise and you get on that treadmill, those same feel-good endorphins come, come, come to pass when you start expressing gratitude, when you're praying, when you, just like Dr. Nicole said, those feel-good hormones, and they feel good, right? You get a runner's high. Come on, let me get, let me hear some people talk about their prayer highs that they be getting. Come on, let me hear some people talk about their gratitude highs that they get. Let's, let's Let's start talking about those highs. Come on, it's they 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 flood the reward system of your brain. That changes everything. Come on, Thank that's you. good stuff. That's good Thank stuff. You. That's good news. God is so perfect. He created us. He knew exactly what would happen in our bodies. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know exactly what would happen that's in our true. bodies. And there are a lot of mechanisms in the body, both physical health and mental health, where we're able to restore things on our own, right? Because because God designed us that way, right? In his yeah. infinite wisdom, he designed us to be able to heal ourselves in a lot of ways. But again, I always go back to if you're somebody who needs a little help with that in the beginning, that's okay too, though, yes. right? That's okay. So yes. I, just, I always, because I always, it's always somebody who says, I just felt so bad and just didn't seek help for so long because I just, mm. I just was so embarrassed and I just... Yeah. You know, and so I, I just always somebody if, if just if that's what's in your head, let's work mm -hmm. on getting it out of there. Right. Yeah, because, let's break that off for you right now. Yeah, let's let's get that get that out of there, because that little voice will keep you paralyzed and keep mm -hmm. you not moving. And because fear and anxiety and depression and all those things will paralyze you. Either mm -hmm. you're so nervous, you, you, you know, you, you can't move. Right. You ever been so scared or so mm -hmm. nervous like you just didn't do anything. It's yeah. not that you ran or you, you just, you just, you were stuck. You could not move. You were paralyzed. Anxiety will paralyze you. Depression will paralyze you, right? That stuff, it will have, it will have you stuck and not living a life that God intended for you to live and not living life period. I mean, you'll already be dead and just a shell just walking around, you know? And I think it's important to, you know, that those things will prevent you from living your life. And I, I do find that, you know, it's a, um, you know, I see it as almost an honor to God for me to continue to fight, right? Like mm -hmm. he didn't put me here for nothing. He didn't put me here to just lay in bed all day. He didn't put me here to be so depressed. I couldn't get out of bed. And sometimes I might need some help with that because I might not be able to do it on my own. My prayers might not be, might not feel like enough in that moment. And I get that. But that's not why we're here is to just give up. Like, I don't feel like he put us here to just kind of take up space. Mm-hmm. That's real. That's and real. everybody might not see what their purpose is, but there is one. That's it. Everybody's got something. Yeah. And the best way to find out what your purpose is, is to talk to the manufacturer. That is the best way to figure out, you know, I mean, so many people are buying all of these classes and, you know, trying to, to get somebody else to tell them what their purpose is. And it's like, I need for you to talk to Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. find out why you're here. Because when you begin to 
to hear what the Lord is saying in regards to your life. That when he knit you in your mother's womb, that there was a perfect plan for your life. That he knew you from the beginning and he knows you to eternity because you've accepted Christ. And when you know the plan of God, even even just the journey of of getting to know what your plan is, is such an amazing journey. Just as you as you just walk closer with God, it, it's just it, it's an amazing journey. And when you begin to discover like all of your actions, like everything else does not does not matter. Your actions began to focus because you see the end goal now. And you began to focus. Now you have hope, some things that you haven't even seen. And now you're able to look at that thing and say, okay, I got to get there. So every assignment, you become more obedient to that assignment. You become more obedient to, to hearing his word because you want to get to that end goal. You want to run your race with vitality. You want to run your race uh, with joy. He says that I will give you a long, satisfied life. And when you are in a mental space that you can't even receive that, it stagnates you. Like Dr. Nicole said, it mm -hmm. paralyzes you. And that's exactly, come on, that's exactly what the enemy wants from you. Is he yeah. wants to paralyze you because if he can paralyze you, he can kill your dreams. Mm -hmm. He can kill everything that God has planted inside of you. He can kill your dreams and he can eventually kill you. Right. He told Jesus at the end of the 40 day fast, he says, uh, after he had been fasting, he came to Jesus at his weakest moment. And he told Jesus, he says, just throw yourself over the rocks. The angels, I mean, you, you, mm -hmm. you say you got the angels will come and lift you up. And he says, you will not tempt God. Mm -hmm. The enemy mm -hmm. wants you to throw yourself over the hill. He wants you to, to hurt yourself. He wants you to commit suicide. When, when, um, the man with the, with the, with the demons, with the legions, thank you, Holy Spirit. He had legions. He was dwelling among, among the tombs. He, he, and as soon as Jesus came, those demons cried out and said, wait, 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 what do you have to do with us? Lord, like, are you going to cast this out? And Jesus like, yeah, y'all gotta go skedaddle. And they went into the pigs. And what did the pigs do? The pigs ran and killed themselves and jumped over the cliff. That was the oh, that was the end game of that of those demonic spirits. Mm -hmm. Was for them to commit suicide. And when they were cast out of man and went into those pigs, that, that, they ran straight for the cliffs mm -hmm. and killed themselves. That is the plan of the enemy. That is the lie of the enemy that God doesn't have plans for. He has plans for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know what? I'm just going to break that off of your mind right now. I'm just going to break that off in Jesus name. We're going to mm -hmm. break off the lies the enemy has told you. In fact, tonight you all have assignment tonight. Thank you. Holy spirit. Every lie that you believe about yourself, I'm not worth it. You know, I don't, nobody loves me. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not good at anything. Um, I'm not beautiful. I'm not pretty. Every lie that the enemy has said about you, I want to want you to make a column and write down what those lies are. And then I want you to go and I want you to write down the truth in the Bible. And you can literally just Google. I am a fan of Googling Bible mm -hmm. verses. Mm -hmm. You go and you Google the opposite of whatever is said and said, find that Bible verse. Mm -hmm. And then you replace that lie with the word of God, with the word of truth. That is your assignment mm -hmm. tonight. And as you do that, you are literally renewing your mind in Christ. That's what it looks like to renew your mind in Christ is to replace the lie with the truth of God. Mm -hmm. So and if you're gonna- terrible how yeah. Isn't that terrible how like that voice that, you know, just that nagging, that enemy, that voice will have you believing 
like you're almost that your standards are higher than God's. Ooh. Like your standards for yourself yeah. are higher than God's standards for us, yeah. right? Because he's forgiven us. He says we're Come worthy. On. He says there's hope. He says there's all those things, right? Yeah. He says we're beautiful. He says we're perfect. I mean, like he says all these things, right? But then we come through and we're like, well, I'm not good enough. Well, no, I'm, I'm too ugly. I'm too this. I'm too that. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm hopeless. I, you know, I shouldn't go on. And it's so weird that we can lift other people up. Like we can constantly mm -hmm. lift up other people. Like, oh, girl, you know what the Bible says. Da, da, da. But when it comes to ourselves, it's like when it comes to us, we think that we have a higher standard for ourselves than God has for us. Mm, that's so good. Which is, doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> Come on. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't Come make on. sense at all. But we do. We believe that. We continue yeah. to beat ourselves up. We continue to blame ourselves for stuff. We continue to think we can't do this and that and you can't do this and can't do that. And it's just always amazing to me, even when I catch myself thinking those things like, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this or that. And then I have to snap out of it like, girl, <laughs> it goes back to that Maybe remembering who you are and remembering whose you are, right? Yeah. Like remembering those two things should always help snap you right back to reality when you catch your brain saying, I'm not this enough or I'm not that, I can't do this. Anytime that feeling comes upon me, I have to say it out loud. Like, yeah. come on now. Um, but it is interesting that your brain will take you to a place of almost feeling like you have a higher standard for yourself than God has, mm. you, which just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. His, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Come on, his ways are so much better than our ways. And I'm so grateful <laughs> that his ways are better than than my way, especially my ways. Because if I was going to have it my way, y'all, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Just a complete hot yeah. mess, okay? That's right. why I, I need to hear the word of the Lord because otherwise I am a complete right. hot mess mess and guess right. what he still loves this hot mess <laughs> he is st he still has plans for this hot mess he still says that i have a daughter you are you are you right. are part of the kingdom you are an right. heir to the kingdom come on he calls me friend this hot right. mess he calls me friend so, so we gotta to get to that place that? come on who, we who can't do to it. argue with that we can't do it you can't you can't Cannot. do it. You need to shut that lie down right there. Your ways are not better than his ways. They're just not. No. Nope. They're, they're just not. And you will come to learn that every time you begin to trust him with the little things, your faith starts to increase. And as your faith increases, you continue to, you know, take some steps out and, 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 and act on what you hear. And he comes through every time. He comes through every time. And you're like, man, if I would have did it my way, right? People would be upset. <laughs> that would be some I might not even still be here if I did stuff my way. So <laughs> come on. Come on. Like, let's let's keep it 100. Let's just keep it 100. So listen, if you are gonna do that assignment, let me just see you post in the comments. That assignment helps. I do it now. I don't write it down as much because I, I got scripture stored in my heart. So as, as soon as the enemy starts saying that stuff to me, that's the purpose of us writing it is so that it is written on the tablets of our heart. Come on, Psalms. I don't know which one it is, but Psalms. Come on. It is written it, as you write it out. It gets stored in your heart. And that well, I recommend you take stone. a picture. I yeah. recommend you take a picture of it and keep it in your phone. Yes. We always have our phones with us, right? You yes, may not have do. that piece of paper with you everywhere, that notebook or that journal. But sometimes in the in the worst, darkest little moment or when you're at work and something's going really feeling bad or you can yeah. just pull that picture up and look at it. Come on. Come on. That's so good. So listen, Dr. Nicole, this has been absolutely amazing. Do you guys, are you guys feeling this? Are you guys feeling this? Are you all getting some information? Are you all getting revelations of who you are in Christ? 
Come on, we got the expert here telling you all the same stuff we've been talking about for the past 21 days. Come on, this is good stuff. It just gets reiterated over and over. It doesn't matter. Listen, let me tell you guys something. I've had so many different experts on here from family medicine to anesthesiology to psychiatry to wound care to, you know, um, I can't think of who else. Oh, even physician coaches that have come on here that have literally, it didn't matter what specialty they were in, have reiterated to you guys some of the same thing. Like it is a constant theme. God is constant. God is true. His word does not change. So when you begin to continue to hear these words, when you, listen, faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of God, your faith continues to rise. That's why we're doing 31 days. Come on. It already takes 21 days for you to change a habit. So we on day number 22. Come on. That means habits are changing. That means your mindset is changing. That means the chemicals in your mind. If you have been following along for these past 22 days, things are shifting in your mind. You are getting it. You are having a revelation of God. Come on, he's such a good father. He's such a good father that doctors from across specialties mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. speak the same biblical truths that you can see affects so many different organ systems in your body. Mm hmm And it's the same thing over and over again. Stress, anxiety, worry. Fear, shame, unforgiveness. Come on, we didn't even get into unforgiveness tonight. Right. But that's a huge one. Bitterness, anger. These are all the same things and they come with your emotions. The enemy comes after your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. When he attacks your emotions, come on, he's going for your mind. Mm -hmm. When he goes for your mind, he's going for your emotions. Come on. And when either of those are messed up, your will gets compromised. Come on. And then it flows down to your body. Your body physically manifests what you are feeling. Mm -hmm. Your body physically manifests what you are thinking. As a man thinketh, so is he. Come on. It's all connected. It's all connected. Dr. Nicole. You have a private practice. She I has do. a virtual private practice, guys. Listen, go ahead and start posting in the comments what city and state you are in. She covers nine states. Come on. Dr. Nicole covers nine states. So go ahead and start posting in the comments. I'm going to tell you guys what states she covers. Because we want you guys to come talk to Dr. Nicole. We want you guys to get the therapy that you need. Okay? We need for you to get up. I see Inglewood, California. Rosetta, come on. Hemet, California. Come on. That Sacramento, California. You got some California folks on here. Come on. California is one of the states that she covers. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. <laughs> Where else are you watching from? Richmond, California, Chicago, Illinois. I'm sorry, Chicago. Not this time. Connecticut. I see Connecticut. I'm sorry. Connecticut is not on the list. Where else are you watching from? But that's okay. Seek counseling that's right. in your states. That's right. Memphis, and if you Tennessee. reach out to me and if anybody reaches out and you are looking for, you know, someone in your area, I can recommend somebody. Come on. You guys hear that? You all got permission to reach out to Dr. Nicole. So how can they find you? You can find me. You can find me on any social media platform at Dr. Nicole Sykes. So D-R-N-I-C-O-L-E-P-S-Y-C-H. And if you specifically are looking for practice information and you'd like to go to my website, it is elosinpsych.com. So E-L-O-C-I-N. P-S-Y-C-H dot com. And you can go to that website. You can, there's a uh, contact us page and you can send a message and someone will get back with you. Amen. You guys see that? So I'm going to put the, the link in the comments. 
so you guys will have that it will also be and you all can see on all of the if you go back and look through the videos all of the free gifts that you all receive they're at the top of the video they're at the top in the comments um, in the title section of each one so you all can do that you can also screenshot this if you're on Periscope because you know you can't copy and paste on Periscope and on on YouTube so you guys can definitely screenshot that there she covers California Georgia Louisiana Oklahoma, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, Virginia, and Wyoming. So and Illinois guys, is and pending. I will say that. Illinois is pending. So come on, come work. on. So that means you got to be connected with Dr. Nicole so that if, when, not, not if, when Illinois goes through, that she will be able to see you as well. Come on. There is no shame in receiving therapy. There is no shame and even needing medications as a bridge. Um, but we know that the Lord wants to see you healed. As a believer, you have to stand on his word. You have to believe his word. You have to grab hold of his, of his word so that you can do what? Grab hold of your healing. Come on, y'all. Go ahead and get this ebook. Make sure you all are getting this ebook. I am literally going through this ebook with you all. You all don't know it. But the ones that have it, all of the stories that we talk about are in this ebook. You have to know what the word of the Lord says. You have to know what he is saying to you so that you can receive the healing that is already He paid for it. Jesus already paid for it up on the cross. It's already done. You just got to grab hold of it. You just got to grab hold of it of your healing so i pray guys that day number 22 has blessed you if, if it has blessed you let me see you go ahead and post that in the comments that you have been blessed that you have received a revelation of his word something let me know come on that he is doing it for you that he is doing it for you come on we just pray right now in the name of Jesus, come on, for healing, healing of your minds, healing of your bodies, healing of your souls. He is doing that for you right now. Let me just pray for you. Father God, we just glorify you and we just thank you, Lord. I pray, Holy Spirit, that the word that went forth, that it is sealed into the hearts of your people, that they begin to recognize who they are and whose they are. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you give them a revelation of your word. I pray, Holy Spirit, that they are that their faith is increasing daily as they continue to renew their mind in Christ. I come against the spirit of heaviness right now in the name of Jesus. I break it off your people. I command it to go as a daughter in Christ. I command it to go in the name of Jesus. I tell it to lift right now in the name of Jesus. I pray Holy Spirit that they began to put on the garment of praise. Come on. There is, there is, there is things that happen when you give God praise. There's things that happen in your body when you have a heart of gratitude. I pray Holy Spirit that you are pouring out your oil of joy over each and every person right now. I pray Holy Spirit for those those who are grieving, those who are mourning the loss of someone or something. Some people have lost jobs. Some people have lost uh, wages. People have lost family members and friends due to uh, uh, sickness and disease. So for anyone who is mourning right now, I'm praying that God exchanges that, that, that those ashes for beauty in Jesus name, that he brings the comforter, that the comforter is, is being released to you right now, that he comforts you and gives you strength during this time. I pray Holy spirit that their hearts are postured to receive healing in the name of Jesus and we just glorify you and we honor you we honor you for what you are doing and the young lady who had uh, issues with her back 
I don't know if I missed you. If you're still on here, we are praying that the Lord uh, heals your back, that the Lord is releasing healing in your right knee and leg in Jesus name, that there is Holy Spirit fire, that as you uh, prophetically get up and you're walking and you're bending, that the pain is ceasing in the name of Jesus, that that pain is leaving your body in the name of Jesus, and that your back is restored to where it is supposed to be in Jesus name name. We glorify you, Lord, and we honor you, and we thank you. And the, Sharon, you're still here. Sharon, how you doing? Tell us how you're doing. Tell us how your leg and back is doing. We're just praying for you collectively. Um, for those of you all who are intercessors, um, just begin to pray uh, for Sharon. I'm going to put her name up so you can call out her name in the spirit as we believe in faith uh, that she is healed in Jesus name. That pain that was a six or seven uh, still sore. Is it improving? Is it improving or is it uh, worse or what is it doing? If it, it scale from one to 10, how bad was it and where is it now? In the name of Jesus, we're just going to believe that you are doing it, Lord. We are going to believe that you are doing it for your daughter. We are just going to bless you. I'm going to stay right here just for a moment. I'm just going to stay right here just for a moment. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, release your power. Release your power in Jesus' name. Come on, do it, Jesus do it more lord it was a nine and now it's a seven do it more lord more jesus more jesus more jesus more jesus sharon if you want um i'm gonna inbox you and i'm gonna keep praying for you um i'm gonna get on the line and i'm gonna continue praying for you because i believe i see it right now god is doing it you were a nine and now you're a seven the pain is decreasing so we are believing in faith Come on, that God is doing it for you. We're doing, he's doing it for you. So I'm going to hop off of here and then I'm going to hop right on and I'm going to call you and we're going to continue to pray in Jesus name. That's right. You all continue to pray for her. We love you, Lord. We honor you in Jesus name. Do it for your glory. Do it for your glory. Thank you so much, Dr. Nicole, for joining us tonight. This is day number 22. We really appreciate you. And again, I, I pray for you before we, we even came on, but I, I want to say it publicly. I release uh, blessings over you and your family and your practice. And I know the Lord is just, he's, he's, he is well pleased uh, with the work that you're doing. So we just love you and we thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. I look forward to joining you again sometime. Well, let's do it. Y'all heard that here. She's coming back. I'm coming back. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Love you guys. We'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.